What's up, it's Alan, and today we have a special episode of Caribbean Vibrations, where I sit down with three guys, we talk about our love of sports, gambling, and its effects on the Caribbean community. You're watching Caribbean Vibrations, and we're coming to you from the Sound Studios in downtown Toronto, and I'm gonna to introduce you to the gentleman who'll be sharing the stage with me today. First up, we have Michael Husbands, a barber with over 20 years of experience, a volunteer basketball coach and father, Cyril Pratt, a logistics operation manager by day, loves his family, all sports, and has enjoyed his fair share of sports betting, and Jelani goodridge reed a recent graduate of TMU's RTA Sports Media Program, who currently works for Snap Call Media, worked for Parlay Media Group, and Rogers Sportsnet. How are you guys doing today? Good. Good, amazing. Very good. Pleasure to have you guys here. Now, gambling, I gotta say to you, gambling is a taboo subject in our community. That's very sensitive, especially if you're losing. And my first experience as a gambler, or not a gambler, being involved in gambling is I used to work at a casino when I was at the University of Windsor as a student trying to make a little extra bucks. And one of the first things that kind of stood out to me is I'd always see the same people. And I remember, you know, back in the day, you got your part-time job trying to make that extra money. Christmas, time and a half, or double time and a half. And I remember going now, and I was a marketing representative of those people who got the cards and made you keep going. And I met this one lady, and she was on this machine, playing dollars a slot, playing every time. She won $200,000. And I remember this is pretty cool. Back in the day, we take the Polaroid, big check, all that stuff. And I was very excited for her because I saw her as a member and she was always doing stuff. So that was Christmas. But then I remember Boxing Day, she was back at the same machine pulling the slots. What was your first experience or what are your thoughts on gambling? And what was your first experience and when did you start betting? I, I'm really, really um, interested in sports. And oh. Sports has been a part of my whole life. Um, I never really gambled, gambled. I just did it for fun when you know I'd go on trips with friends and we'd go to the casino and I would just dabble a little bit. I was, I have a very compulsive personality so I never really wanted to try to get into it thinking that maybe I'm gonna get myself into some trouble. You know I've heard a lot of you know, stories about people just overindulging and I just didn't want to be that guy so I just you know moderately just bed and playing 21 or going on a slot machine put 50 bucks in there and just play for fun and that was it I would go. But then getting into sports betting I felt like I knew what I was doing. So it inclined me, I was more comfortable. So I was able to, you know, use, put a little bit more money because I felt confident that I was gonna win. Whereas when I was in the casino, I was just, you know, it's like trying to win the lottery is just luck of the draw. So I was inclined to try more because I felt like I knew more and I had a chance every time. First couple times I won, it was an amazing feeling and I just kept on chasing and chasing and chasing. And this is where I am today. <laughs> okay, all good. And yes, for me, uh, my thoughts of gambling is, uh, well, for now, it's just for fun. Before, I used to always try to chase. Um, I started gambling uh, when ProLine first got introduced. And uh, I started off with just small bets, $2, $2, $2. I think my first big win was like $1,300. So I got excited. $2, I can win this? Imagine if I put... 50 bucks on it, right? So initially it started off slowly, slowly, slowly. And then I didn't have a family. So what's $50? So I kept on betting, 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 betting. Yeah, I would hit it some, I will lose some. It came to a point where, you know, when you're down, you're really down, right? You're really down. So in a sense where you have to call friends and you'd be like, hey man, listen, I just need a hundred bucks. I gotta put gas in my car right now because you know, I'm really down. At the start, it was easy money and then it became a habit. It became just chasing, you know, just the excitement. So once I got a hold of it, it's basically when I had a family, right? I was like more so, you know what? This can't be everyday thing. So now it's more, I just do it for the fun of it. It's not like before when I was chasing it. Now it's like, all right, five bucks, whatever. I lost it. I don't care about it, right? But before it was more like 50, 100, 50, 100, because you're always trying to chase the big parlays, right? So now the thought is just for excitement, just so I can watch sports. It's not fun watching sports without having something on the line. You know, it's like, really, I'm really watching this right now. I'd rather just go to sleep. But when you have something on the line, it's excitement. Yeah, for me, um, it started a long time ago, actually, because my dad, mm -hmm. you mentioned pro line. Yes. He would do picks on the weekend for NFL all the time. And I'm watching the games with him. I'm like, what is that? Like, what are you doing? 
So he, he explained it to me. I'm like nine years old. I don't understand. Yeah. So I would start making picks, but not like betting picks. So I just picked the team that would win the games. And then ultimately I started working in sports and working with companies that are in iGaming. And I ultimately wanted to bet because I, I had a job and I wanted to know what I was talking about to the people. Like I already knew about the, the guys on the teams, who's good, who's bad. But in terms of the betting, in terms of the picks and giving you my advice, I wanted to make sure I knew what I was talking about. For me, I think, like you mentioned, it's more so an excitement factor, all right? I don't, I don't lean on it. There are guys that do lean on betting. When they're watching the sports, they, that's all they talk about. That's all they think about. I like watching the game, but sometimes, you know, you want to put some money down, sprinkle a little, a little bit. Wager, a little and yeah, <laughs> a little sprinkle. So yeah, I think it's more fun. It's more fun for me on the side. And I obviously love basketball, love football and stuff like that. But I think all the sports at this point are fun to watch when you have that extra, you know, incentive. Now, I remember when I used to play ProLine religiously for like three years. I uh, checked the injury reports, show up at 12.50, I'd box at least the two last games, the Sunday and Monday night games. So if I knew I bet at one, by 7.30, I knew if I won or not. And funny enough, I won a couple times um, with props, played pools, box everything. I didn't win, but one of my friends won like close to $80,000. And I, for me, that was like, oh, I think I can figure it out. But then I started to realize that was what my Sundays were becoming. I wasn't even enjoying the games. So I had to kind of like take a little pause out for a while, Gain a little bit of self-control myself. Well, what do you guys think are some of the signs of early gambling problems or addiction? Uh, for me, once you sit back and then you realize, wait, this is taking over my life, then it starts to hit you. I don't want this to be everyday thing, mm. right? And funny enough, you said uh, your friend won 80,000 because we used to have a group and we used to play the pools, right? The football pools. And there was like 10 of us and we won 100,000. Yeah, so we split it 10 ways. So initially, you think that you're always gonna win, right? So every Sunday, we'll get phone calls. Hey, okay, so which two teams are we boxing, right? Because uh, I think for every box is $20 yep. or something like that. And you're always like, okay, so we're gonna box these four teams. We're gonna put $80 down. We're gonna box it. So you're always chasing. But then when you start losing, you're just like, wait, we lost this much, we lost that much. Now, everything that you just made, you're just giving it back to them. So initially, I, I had to get myself out of that group. I said, listen, guys, this is costing me way too much. I got bills mm. and this is not it. I don't mind playing $10, mm. right? But now you guys are asking 80 every week and then we're buying five, six, seven tickets. It becomes costly, all right? So that's when I knew that, no, nah, this is taking over my life. I don't want this. Yeah, I think early signs that you might see is when you're talking to somebody about their their picks or whatever, um, especially if they're new into it, and they let's say they get a nice win. After that, then they're probably going to be prone to want to do more and more and more. And I think with with my guys, you know, we're we're younger guys, so 18 to 25. A lot of the conversation nowadays is not just about the game, right? It's honestly, if you're if you're talking about the game or about a league. The first thing that's gonna be mentioned is a parlay. A lot of the time, it's, you know, they, they might not even talk about who's playing tonight. It's like, what's your pick? Show me your parlay. What, what, what are we thinking tonight? So, or how much money are we putting down? And I think that could be a problem because at the end of the day, yes, you wanna watch the games. And if you are gonna bet, you can bet fine. But all the conversation always is about what are we putting down? Let me put you in a group. I've been in groups too. Yeah, I've been in betting groups where we're, we're talking about what picks we're, we're looking at. And there's some other guys that I've met who are even more degenerate than I am. And it's, it gets crazy, it gets really crazy. So, and one other thing that could be a sign or something that causes people to really get into it a bit too much is just the fact that NFL Sunday, NBA during the week, you're seeing a lot of ads about sports books, about betting all the time, right? Pre-game, they always have a segment for it. During the game, they have a segment, halftime and post-game. So that could get in your mind and that could cause people to be like, you know what? Oh, I forgot to make this bet, this first half bet. And there's so many, um, there's so many picks that you could make nowadays, right? So that, that could be an issue um, definitely down the road. And before you answer, I'm gonna ask you about something that you kind of brought up. 
What was your first initial thoughts with Jonte Porter? What happened with him? Because I had some thoughts on him, but then kind of found a bit more. So what were your thoughts with him and his, his gambling problem, the subsequent ban? Well, like you said, it was a problem, obviously. You know, it put him in a situation where he wasn't able to provide for his family because he was just, he just needed to gamble. He just needed the fast money he needed, or somebody depended on him mm -hmm. for his picks or depended on him to play the way he needed to play. He needed to um, dumb down himself. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he he jeopardized his work, you know, showed that he doesn't have very good work ethic as well. So as a character, it really deteriorated him. Um, you know, by all means, it's not a good idea. But again, it's one of those things where gambling took over somebody. Now, further to that thought, do you think that, because my initial reaction, I think was the most like everybody, what an idiot. Right? We never thought about anything about addiction. We just judged him so quickly because we're like, this guy's making all this money. Why would he do these bets? Like, it doesn't make any sense to me because we're taking it from a, just a very macro perspective. Like, you got money, why would you gamble? 100%. And, and that's what I, I want to say something on because it might not be that he has a problem. Mm -hmm. It might be just excitement. Mm -hmm. He just needed to do something, right? Mm -hmm. It might not be him, it might be like he said, somebody mm -hmm. was relying on him to throw the game mm -hmm. and get a quick win. Mm -hmm. Because if you're making all this money, why do you want to bet a couple of hundred bucks or a thousand bucks to win what? I don't know if it was 20K. Yeah, he, he wasn't winning a lot because a lot of it was just like his own performance and there wasn't a lot of action as they would say. Exactly. That. Yeah. So but, if, I, but I think it speaks to, to the larger conversation of I was like, yo, this guy's an idiot. Well, and I, don't, I never even this. thought that it could be something else. I just thought it was just, you know? Yeah. Like, now, isn't, you said excitement. Isn't that part of the addiction, the excitement? I agree, it is. Because it's a thrill, right? And it is it is an addiction. For me to sit here and say it's not, I'll be lying, right? Because like I said before, I can't even watch sports without having something on the line because it's boring now. So I get excited knowing that even if it's $2 I have on, I'm like, oh yeah, let's go. Tyreek Hill, you can get that 30 yards, 30 more yards. It's an excitement. It makes me want to watch. So yeah, it is an addiction. The worst thing I think I ever did was look at my account history. And that was not good. When I look back at that, I literally took a month off and didn't do anything. I wasn't like I say cold turkey, but it just made me realize like, this is adding up. And what am I doing? Like I could be doing something better with this money. Right? Not to say it's vacation or a new car or anything like that, but I could be doing something better. I could buy myself another pair of shoes or something. But again, you hear people talking about it and you want to get in. Yeah. So you don't want to be left out. So you get right back in again. Now it's kind of interesting that we're seeing way more gambling advertising today than we did before, celebrity endorsements seen team sponsorships you know is this something that when you think about it now gambling is more of an everyday habit or something that we do why do you think there's a stigma attached with gambling in most things there's good and evil right so um, the thing with gambling is it's a quick way to make money right everybody's looking for the quickest way to, to make money we had some hard times we had COVID this is coming after COVID People still have money. People are still trying to make money. People are trying to make ends meet. This, by the, all the advertising and it being in your face and everybody talks about it at work, on the subway, not even your business, but you always hear what somebody's trying, the ne has the next best pick or the next best draw. And everybody's just trying to figure out a way to make money. Some people are getting engulfed in it. You shouldn't be doing it to make ends meet, but some people are. We got alcohol addictions, you got tobacco, things of that nature. But I think this has become so accepted because like like we've been talking about, it's everywhere now, right? And it's not it's not just when you're at work or you know talking to your friends at a function. It's even in schools, right? It's even, you know, there's high schoolers that find ways to bet. Yeah, there wow. are there are ways that they could get it done when they're in math class. There are ways that you could get it done, like in university when I was a couple years ago at TMU, we were doing it during the class. Like we were making sure, yo, know, you, you, you got you got your picks for tonight. Yes, okay, good. So that's that's another issue, right? Because everywhere now, but that's the other thing. It could be considered an issue, but at the same time, it could also be 
considered to be an addiction that is now accepted by everybody because it's just a part of everyday life now, right? And it's easy access, it's on your phone, it's on your laptop, your computer, so it's everywhere now. Uh, you don't have to actually go in person to a casino or whatever to make your picks or an actual sports book in person to make your picks because it's everywhere now. We've, one of the topics we've talked about during gambling is the chasing the high, the ups and the downs. But how do you think that affects people's mental health? Because when you're chasing that high, is it really that, are you really that connected? And how much are you willing to give up to get that high? And how does it affect you mentally? So, yeah, it can be really bad because, you know, you, I, I know some guys that have had some good winnings and they lean on that. So after one big win, they'll look to the book, they'll look to those apps to make sure that they're continuing to win. But we've talked about it already where you're not going to win each time. As time goes on, you're seeing more stories actually about people to where it's not just, you know, feeling bad one day about a loss or things of that nature. It's their life. You know, there's some people that have really thought about ending their life based on betting because they might owe somebody a lot of money. They might have a situation where they need money ASAP, but they don't know where to look. So they look to the sports betting. And if you're losing, then that, you know, all hell breaks loose basically, right? So that, that can be a huge issue. And it's not just older people. You're seeing it with younger people all the time. Like I talked about earlier, they're always talking about betting, always talking about parlays and things of that nature. So now that it's a part of their life, it could be an issue when you're talking about, man, I see my friend talking to me about, I, yo, I need money now. Like, do you have somebody that could send me some pics ASAP, right? So you gotta watch for those because that could be an early sign of mental health because if you're losing and it catches up to you, that could be a huge issue. We're all Caribbean background yeah. and based. Did they ever talk about gambling in your household? Like, was it a conversation or was it just taboo? No one talked about it. It was taboo. Nobody talked about it. You're not going to say, oh, well, you went and grabbed a pint at the bar and then you went in the bookie store right now just to go. No one talked about it. You're not going to talk about how much you lost. Even now, it's still a taboo. You're not going to tell your wife, oh, I lost 50 bucks when you when you can use that 50 bucks for gas. You don't talk to your wife about it. Yeah, right now we're talking, we talk some among friends, but like you're not really talking about it in your own household, right? So it's still a taboo. So why don't we talk about it in our households? I don't know. It's a fear of being judged, a fear of thinking that, you know, someone is judging you, telling you really you could do something better with the money. Why are you doing this? You know, it, it, it's it's a sense where you know you could do something better with your money. But then you think, wait, I don't smoke. I don't buy cigarettes. I'm betting five bucks. What's the big deal? But you're right. It is a big deal because five turns into 10, 10 turns into 100. So, yeah, you just feel like you're going to be judged. So maybe that's why we don't talk about it. Growing up in a West Indian household, nobody really gambled. I mean, in my house was my grandma played the 649. And that was it. You know, my uncles, nobody ever bet on, on horses. I never heard about it. I never. I only knew bookies from the TV, right? I never heard about sports betting unless you're watching a movie, right? And there's people betting on the movie and you're like, oh, that's pretty cool. That's gangster stuff. I thought it was gangster stuff. You, you're sports betting. You go to a bookie, you have to $10,000. You don't pay him. You break your legs, right? So that's I don't think many West Indian people did that. And I, I hear of West Indian people like, the horses were huge, right? You know, so, um, but that was never a thing in my house. And then growing up, you know, and going to school, there was no, pro, like, there was no app. There was no, nobody was talking about it in school. We wanted to ride our bikes and talk on cell phones and that was it, right? And I have kids that sit in my chair at the barbershop and they're like, hey, look what I won yesterday. How? You don't have a credit card. How are you playing? But they're figuring out some way to get on there and play. Now, I don't know if households now are talking about it. I'm guessing they are because the kids are getting somebody's credit cards to play. They might be different now. But back then, growing up, it was it was taboo. Eh? Nobody talked about it. Gambling was bad. And my dad did it a little bit, so I saw him do it. So I wanted to try. Mom said, hey, you're not doing that. You're not doing that, okay? That's your money. Once you started getting money, once I started working, she wanted me to keep it, not to throw it away. Um, but, you know, again, with the friends and, you know, everyone in my ear about it, you get more prone to wanting to use it. But yeah, in the household, it was more so 
looked at as something not to do. Just because you you make your hard earned money, you don't want to you know risk giving that up. Because again, it's, it's a risk. Gambling is a risk. For example, I had a friend. Um, unfortunately, you know, it's a, a father and, and and sorry, it's a mother and father, and you know, it's old school. Dad pays the mortgage, mom takes care of the household. And unfortunately, I heard later on that dad was a gambler. And you wouldn't expect it. He was a very straight-laced guy. But he had maybe like three years not paid the mortgage. So, you know, they ended up losing the house. And then they had to move back with their son and all this stuff. And I think, you know, I'm not saying that the answer would be for him to talk. But again, like we're talking about the stigma. We don't talk about it. Yes. So maybe he was at wit's end yeah. and cause someone could have helped him from before. And I think, you know, having conversations like we're having today is like, you know, it's not all the end of the world. And I think if we can have more conversations like this, it'll help people to realize if you need help, you gotta ask for help. 100%. Now, how can like three people like us help to educate and edify people about some of the pitfalls of gambling? How can we let them know there is help out there? Like what advice would you give to people about how kind of not to get involved or how to deal with stuff? Um, for me, I would say it's not a style of living. Don't think that this is a way to earn money. This is my little side gig and then you're okay with that. So, like you said, maybe talking about it, like this right here, someone sees it, it might help them, it might not. I don't know everyone where everyone is when it comes to gambling. You know, one of the reasons why we're here is just let people know about the RGC, right? That's why we're here. And you know, we're, as intelligent black men, we're here having a discussion about it. If we see anybody having trouble, you know, we should be able to bring it up and not talk about, hey man, you might have been able to get some money. Now you got no money. You should have took the bet, right? We're gonna just let people know, like maybe maybe you you bid a little bit more than you can chew, you know. And and maybe not next time, sit this one out. In reality, it's for fun, and it sucks to lose. But we, we all played sports, right? We learn from our losses, and it's the same thing, I guess, with gambling too. You gotta to learn from your loss because if you just get engulfed and chasing, and you're not learning, then you're gonna get put yourself in a problem when you're going on these apps and you're looking at these ads they always do say play responsibly i think that's something that people look over look past because it's right there it's whatever yeah. when you enter the app they even have you know something that says hey the, you know the terms and conditions ain't nobody reading that but it's there it's there so try to just are remember to play? Are yeah are you fit to play so just remember you gotta play responsibly you can play it is it is you know it's fun it's fun to win, but play responsibly. Now, don't forget, if you feel you have a problem with gambling addiction, you can check out the resources like Responsible Gambling Council. And you can check us out on social media at TV, or check out our website, carevibetv.com. I'm your host, Guide Allen, and we'll see you next time on Caribbean Vibrations. Thanks for watching Caribbean Vibrations. Follow us on social media at TV, or visit our website, caribbeanvibrationstv.com. I'm your host, Guide Allen, and we'll see you next time on Caribbean Vibrations.